Hey class, I'm Mr. Thornton, and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, using equations. There's a whole range of equations which you need to be able to work with when you're doing GCSE physics, and I appreciate they can look a little bit intimidating at first. However, to get that C, there's not actually very much that you need to be able to do with them. If you're not doing a higher tier paper, then you don't need to worry about algebraic rearrangement at all. All you need to be able to do is pick the correct equation from a list, stick some numbers into it, and then work out the answer on a calculator. These really, with a little bit of practice, should be some pretty easy marks for you to get. But you've got to remember you're competing with students from all over the country, and an awful lot of them will be put off straight away and won't even attempt the question. If you can get these questions right, then that's going to put you ahead of all those other students that you're competing with, and it's going to dramatically improve your grade. So it is important to get them right. Now, when you sit down to do the exam, the uh, equation sheet which you get given will either be printed inside the front or the back of the booklet, or else it will be a sheet which is inserted inside the front or the back of the booklet. The first thing you do when you open that exam is check that you have the equation sheet. If you don't, you put your hand straight up and you tell an invigilator. And then when you finish the exam, you need to make sure your science teacher knows that it wasn't there as well, because they may well be able to complain and that could potentially be worth some extra marks. Assuming you do sit down and it's there, it should look something like this. This is the current equation sheet, and it's actually double-sided, the current equation sheet for AQA. And I'm going to put a link for this in the description of this video. It looks pretty horrible though, doesn't it? However, it's actually really, really straightforward once you understand it. So, let me explain. In the left column are your equations. On the right is an explanation of what each letter means. The first thing you need to do is find the correct equation. The question you're attempting will have given you some information already. Here's a typical question. Notice that you're given two numbers and asked to work out a third. Almost every single calculation you have to do will be like this, and you're either going to be multiplying those two numbers together or dividing one by the other. Look at what those two numbers are measurements of. We've got the mass in kilograms here, and in this box we've got the gravitational field strength in newtons per kilograms. And then look at what it is that you're trying to work out. In this case it's weight. So we're looking for an equation that deals with mass, gravitational field strength and weight. There's only one that fits the bill on the formula sheet. It's weight equals mass times gravity, or W equals M times G. That was pretty easy, right? But remember, every single time you need to do this, you're just going to go through the same process it's going to be exactly the same steps which you need to follow. You'll be given some things in the question and you'll be asked to work something out. You just need to make a note of what those things are and then find the equation that matches them. And that's all there is to it. And that is the difficult part. The rest of it is really, really, really straightforward by comparison. If you can do this bit and find the right equation, you're home free. Let me show you how to do the next bit. If the equation you found from the equation sheet tells you to multiply the two numbers together, then do that. If it says divide, then make sure you get the numbers the right way around and do the division. Use a calculator. If your answer comes out with loads of digits after the decimal point, then just round it to a couple of decimal places. Nine times out of 10, that's all you're going to need to do. There are three equations, and just three, which aren't just a simple multiply or divide like all the rest of them are. It's these three. And although they do look a little bit more complex, that's actually to your advantage because it makes it much easier to figure out which one you're dealing with. Because they're all so unusual compared to all the rest, when you actually come to try and spot these equations, you're going to spot them much, much quicker. And remember, figuring out which equation to use, that's the hard part. The rest of it is just sticking some numbers in there and using a calculator to work out the answer. So, if you are dealing with these, remember, actually, because they're more complex, it makes your life easier. For gravitational potential energy, instead of multiplying two numbers together, you'll just multiply three. Mass, the gravitational field strength, and height. For kinetic energy, you multiply a half, that's 0.5 when you type it into your calculator, by the mass and the square of the velocity. If I were you, I'd do this in reverse order. Square the velocity first. That way you don't accidentally square anything else. Then multiply that result by the mass and then by 0.5. 
Lastly, for acceleration, this v minus u on top of the fraction just means how much the velocity has changed. See my other video on acceleration for a more detailed explanation. And that's all you're going to need to do to get that C in your GCSE physics when it comes to dealing with equations. Remember, there's just two steps. Step one, look at all the stuff in the question and find the one equation, and there will be only one, that deals with all the things from that question. Step two, just stick your numbers in and work out the answer. Do the sum that it tells you on the equation sheet. That's not so hard, is it? These ought to be some quite easy marks. Now, there's just a couple more things which you need to be aware of. The first one, and this is hugely important, please don't forget this, is take a calculator into your exam. Now, it only need be a really basic calculator, just one that does the basic functions, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, uh, a square root might be nice as well, but an incredibly basic one. You can pick these up for around about a pound or even less in most supermarkets. It's your responsibility to get one. Make sure you do. They will be assuming that you've got one on the exam. Now, you may have a Casio scientific calculator like this one. This is a recommended one for GCSE maths. And when you do a division, it'll tend to give you an answer as a fraction. If it's doing that, you just need to press this button here with an S and a D and a double-headed arrow like that, and that'll convert it into a decimal. Please try and make sure to remember to do that. You're probably not going to lose any marks on the physics exam if you give your answer as a fraction, but better to be safe than sorry. Give it as a decimal and round it to a couple of decimal places, just to be sure. Secondly, they might throw some non-standard units at you. I'm putting a list, uh, which I'll link to in the description, with all the standard units that you need to know, along with some of the non-standard units that they may just throw in there to try and trip you up. In particular, keep an eye out for kilometers. You need to multiply a thousand to get that into meters. Tons, again, you need to multiply by a thousand to turn that into kilograms. And minutes or hours, remember, if it's in minutes, multiply it by 60 to get it in seconds. Or if a time is in hours, multiply it by 3,600. That's 60 and 60 again. Multiply it by 3,600 to get that into seconds. Other than that, I think you should be fairly well prepared to do these equations now. Good luck in your GCSEs, everyone. And if this video was useful to you, please use the buttons below to like, subscribe, or share it with anyone else you think could also use a little help. Thanks for watching.